Welcome. In this chapter of Class 8 Science, we would be talking about conservation of plants and animals, a very fundamental chapter that we have been studying through our early lectures. But the only few things that would come here which are very, very interesting and important to know is a difference between a zoo, wildlife sanctuary, national park and a biosphere reserve. We'll be also talking about migratory species why there is a migratory pattern that is available, the IUCN classification, the red data book and endangered species. So if you are covered with these topics, you are all set to go, else follow up with the lecture as we proceed. So we have the huge biodiversity that exists in the forest across India and across the globe. Whatever kind of uh, population or whatever kind of organisms we could say live here are classified under two heads. Those are the flora and fauna. Fauna means the animals, flora means the plant. So that's another term that you must be familiar by now. So flora is the plants that we talk about and fauna is the animals. Whenever we are talking about conservation, we definitely need to understand that deforestation activities, cutting of forest is something that is not good for environment. So we need to conserve the plant species. Similarly, poaching of animals is something that's really bad for the food chain to exist and the ecosystem to remain balanced. And therefore, we must have the uh, activities that should check these processes. So why does actually a deforestation take place? Deforestation can occur because of numerous reasons. There could be a need to cut down a forest to build a housing or a housing colony, a residential area. It could be due to build, coming up of an industrial settlement, use of wood, making up of furniture from that uh, wood that is procured or clearing the uh, land area for transportation activities. So all these processes lead to directly or indirectly the deforestation activities. We understand that it's very important for the plants to survive. If there are no plants, definitely the animal life would be directly affected. So deforestation that is cutting down of the forest for any other purpose that we have classified here is important to be checked and restricted. What is important is once the deforestation takes place, what would happen? the soil would flow off because the roots are not present to bind the soil or bind the water that is flowing through. So the water holding capacity of the soil would substantially reduce. There would be movement of the water that would take place. There could be situation of floods that could occur and definitely when there is floods or moving of the water, the topsoil would be moved. As a result, the nutrients, the minerals that are present in the topsoil would be be affected. The next is what is the consequence of this deforestation? Definitely as we said deforestation would take away the topsoil, reduce the water filtration capacity or the water uh, percolation capacity of the soil. The top nutrients that are present in the soil would be taken away because of the deforestation and this would also lead to flash floods or sudden floods. However, there is also the case because of the deforestation, your rainfall would be reduced. How would this happen? Deforestation would lead to rise in the temperature because forests are one of the major carbon sinks. Since there is no forest, what would happen? No carbon would be absorbed and as a result, the carbon would be let free or the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would lead to rising temperature. Rising temperature would because of the higher amount of carbon dioxide would lead to imbalance in the ecosystem and therefore the rainfall would be reduced there would be higher probabilities for the natural calamities to occur the groundwater level would go down and therefore we could say global warming would increase there would be higher temperatures on the earth that would be registered and this would lead to droughts now remember there are two terms droughts and famines so droughts and famines are two different terms when we say drought it's beca because of the paucity or the lack of water however famine is the shortage of food that is uh, 
that is there so there is a difference famine could be due to drought but it could be due to any other reasons for example pest infestation in the crop is also one of the reasons for the famine to occur but drought is exclusively because of the water shortage now to tackle these problems of droughts in many of the areas we have seen water drains that have come up uh, water atms that are a new concept that is being seen so water scarcity becomes a very major issue the next important is the topsoil blows away or moves away with the running water since there are no roots to hold the soil firmly as a result you have the area that is converted slowly and gradually into desert so the present day sahara desert was once a very dense forest that was there and that's how you have the process of desertification that occurs and finally as we said with movement of water you would have floods that would be seen so that's uh, one of the major things then you have the terms biosphere and biodiversity biosphere is simply an interaction of the three uh, hydrosphere atmosphere and lithosphere that is air water and land once the three interact what would happen is you would have a living zone that would be created and this living zone is what is known as biosphere the biosphere is rich in biodiversity biodiversity is the uh, proportion of the plants and the animals the flora and the fauna living here and with uh, numerous varieties that are present in that region now there could be various biosphere reserves that could be there but before we understand that let's first talk about the three terms as we said initially those are the wildlife sanctuaries national parks and biosphere reserves wildlife sanctuary as we said is a area where wildlife is protected in their natural surroundings in a favorable environment we could say you are just protecting the wildlife this has been laid down under iucn classification 4 the next is national park national park is not just the wildlife but the complete ecosystem is preserved laid down under iucn 2 okay now this wildlife sanctuary could be government or private however national parks are maintained by government you have strict prohibition on hunting grazing activities that are seen here and then you have a biosphere reserve one biosphere reserve can be home to numerous national parks numerous sanctuaries at a go this biosphere reserve has three zones core buffer and marginal zone so the core zone is the area where you have no activities that are permitted on the outer zones you have the research and development activities you have the educational activities that are allowed the whole idea is to preserve the the biodiversity of the region now flora and fa fauna the terms we have already discussed some of the species are very unique to specific regions and when the species is unique to a specific region we call those as endemic species so western ghat you have lots of endemic species similarly in the regions of sikkim and himalaya region you have red panda which is endemic to that area you won't find it in the other parts of the world a snow leopard is specifically found in certain areas so the species which are found only in specific areas are very very important to understand the next is uh, a case study of panchmari so panchmari you have uh, in the flora you have wild mango and sal however in case of fauna you have flying squirrels that are endemic to this region so when we talk about the endemic species it's flying squirrel as in the case of panchmani now there is another term that is a species what is a species a species is a group of population that is capable of interbreeding now when there is interbreeding you would have fertile uh, you would have fertile offsprings that could come and each member of the species have certain common characteristics that are taken across the generation so from one generation to the next you would have certain characteristics that would be carried forward the next important question comes in a difference between the zoo and a wildlife sanctuary so uh, under both you are protecting the animals but in wildlife sanctuary it's in their natural or a favorable condition however zoo is within the confined boundaries so wildlife sanctuary we say is much better for protection for better living and 
However, protection is there in the case of zoo also, but it's a limited mobility for the animals within the boundations that are there. So you have the difference between the zoo and the wildlife sanctuary. National parks we have already talked about. To give a thrust to the national parks, you had various uh, projects that came up. For example, Project Tiger for conservation of tiger, Project Crocodile for conservation of pro uh, crocodiles. You had the Project Garial for con for conservation of ghadiyas. Similarly, you have another term which is endangered species. Endangered species are those species which are near the verge of extinction. So what is important is these species must be taken care of or in long run they would slowly and gradually become extinct. So these endangered species have been given or classified under the IUCN classification and therefore we say the IUCN classification is very very important. We have covered a separate lecture on IUCN classification and red data book where you have a detailed analysis of all the categories under IUCN. Ecosystem as we already know is an interaction of the biotic and the abiotic components, the living and the non-living components. So maintaining and preserving of the ecosystem is another very important aspect in your national parks. The red data book keeps the record of all the endangered species that are there. It has been maintained internationally by IUCN. India also maintains its own red data book for the plants and the animals analysis. The next important term that you must be familiar is the migratory birds. Now what are migratory birds? You might have heard about Siberian cranes coming from the region of Siberia. North in the regions of Russia you have the very cold temperatures during the uh, winter months so these birds fly to the regions of Bharatpur mainly in the region of Rajasthan and they remain there for few uh, months. Why does this happen? There are two reasons. First is because of the very cold weather there is unavailability of the food that's there and the second is the climate changes that take place so they need to adopt themselves either to the climatic conditions there or to move away from those climatic conditions and have a better condition for their livelihood. So those are the major steps. Every year you have migratory birds flowing in from the cold areas to the relatively warm areas at a particular time. So they have their own senses to detect this. The next is when we talk about conservation of environment as we said plants are the foremost. So conservation of flora is something that's very very important. Now Let's talk about certain statistics that would help you understand how important it is to conserve plants. We take 17 full grown trees and from those 17 trees we get only one ton of paper. Similarly, if we are recycling the paper, how many times we can recycle? We can recycle it nearly 5 to 7 times. So that's an ample big amount. So at least we are trying to save the cutting of the trees for five to seven times so recycling of the paper is one way to conserve the flora the next is even if each student in the class is conserving just one sheet of paper every day you can understand how many trees could be saved in a year so reuse recycling is something that's very very important and similarly when you are manufacturing paper you definitely have harmful chemicals which are going in the paper ma making and that could also be reduced the next important thing that we need to understand is reforestation so planting of more and more trees in india we have the forest conservation act so through the forest conservation act we are trying to protect and conserve the natural surroundings meet the basic requirements of an individual save the paper not only the paper the energy the water and the trees so that's something that's very very important to understand so this was a very fundamental lecture talking about the conservation of plants and animals some of the key terminologies that we came across endangered species endemic species flora fauna migratory birds the reasons for migration so those would be the major questions from this section we'll be bringing in many further topics stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead